how many clinicians are here? And, and just be totally honest, how many of you want more, raise your hand if you want more data, and then I'll ask you if you want less data, or can you handle? How many of you want more data? Okay, how many of you want less data? Okay, some? Okay. And then here's the next question is, how many of you want that data to enable your patients to do the work? Okay, all of you. Yeah. That's the critical thing. Less. What was that? Otherwise, I want less. Otherwise, you want less. Yeah. I mean, if they're not motivated, they're motivated. Yeah. Because the clinician workflow engaged in development typically does not come into play for many, you know, developers. And, and sometimes it's too late, or sometimes you learn as you go, but it, this has to be the, the provision of data to make you do a better job or with less, same job with less time, whatever that ends up being, it has to be put into the hands that make sense of the patient. And that is our challenge. And it has to be repeatable, and it has to create habits and be lifelong, as opposed to this sprint for weight loss or the sprint for a A1C reduction that we know is gonna come back if that habit isn't permanent. So that's, that's our challenge here. Yeah, I'm gonna, on, on that workflow, uh, if you're in a large clinic, um, we use Synces again as, as we are, are intimate with them. Uh, it is, you know, just because you might, you might code for nine months to get the, the perfect integration with the Epic EHR system, and you think, yeah, I've, I've nailed it. I'm in the app orchard. It's ready to go. I can do 80% of all the hospitals in America. But then you've got to find, you've got to go to a department that wants to use that, that is beginning to use a metabolic therapy, and say, hey, you can do that. Then they've got to go to their IT department and say, hey, I want to interconnect with them. But then that has to be signed off by the director of the hospital. And then, then it's got to get into their dev sprint to be actually manage it and you have to do that with every single hospital in the nation and a patchwork quilt of 260 different EHR systems and then you take that on a global perspective of trying to do the NHS system or doing the German system or any others and it is grindingly glacially slow where tech companies like us are massively quick and fast but trying to change the super tanker Forget about it, it's, it's gonna be a brutal, long uphill struggle. But there are tools now that are available to bring down that cost. And I, I wanna come back one day to you that you mentioned with Joel on the pharma side. You know, it's been designed for sick care, not for health care. And if there are any people here that run an insurance company, if you could lower your health care costs yet still make the margin spread from the principles that you're getting in, could you make your actual insurance company more profitable by actually having a healthy population? If you can reduce ex exogenous insulin by 91%, as Verta Health have shown, we shouldn't have to need Tracy Brown, former head of the ADA, going to Congress saying lower the cost of insulin. It should be lower the root cause, guys, because you can reduce the cost by 91% in 30 days. So that's the shift that could happen. But does BioRad, maker of insulin, want to see that happen? This will be the challenges if you're going to come off of 65% of your med medications. Yeah, I mean, so I spent my whole career in the reimbursed world under the insurance. And I think well, that's one of the things that uh, is kind of a shadow that, the, that a lot of people are chasing in the insurance-based industry is that sounds like a great value proposition, but insurance companies are for-profit entities with a fiduciary responsibility to their investors. If you have index stocks, you want them to be profitable. You should be celebrating Cigna making 1.2 billion in profit last quarter. The reality is they actually cannot make any more money because of the medical loss ratio, depending on how big their commercial populations are. So they are hamstrung to 10 or 15%. How do you grow your profit if you can only make 10 to 15%? You need your claims to go up. And that's where I think there's been this, you know, we look at the $4 trillion market, and we think, oh, we can take cost out, and there's a whole bunch of opportunity from commercial platforms. But the reality is the business is not set, and it's sick care, yes, but there is no benefit to making people healthy in that system. And so a lot of the focus and why we focus mainly on functional and integrative is it is cash pay. And the future really comes from consumer advocacy. And if you think about, you know, high deductible health plans, you know, you're, you're, you're spending the money out of pocket. If I'm autoimmune on a biologic injectable, it's a $60,000 a year. My co pays $10,000. Yeah. Why don't I just go pay a truly integrated practitioner the actual $8,000 out of pocket get off of my meds, reduce my inflammatory markers, 
And now I'm actually not worried about those copays going forward because I can get back onto generics or even off of drugs uh, completely.